Oh, hello. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us today. Uh, really honoured to present to Arch College. Um, I'm here as the programme leader of the BA International uh, Fashion. Um, my name is Natalie Evans. Uh, we offer two uh, pathway on the program I'm going to discuss. Um, so if it's okay, I'm going to share a presentation and Patsy, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself as well. Thank you. Hello everyone, thank you very much for having us. I'm Dr Patsy Perry, Reader in Fashion Marketing here at Manchester Fashion Institute. And I've had um, quite significant input into developing our new suite of master's programmes, which I'll be excited to share with you during Natalie's presentation. Thank you. So thank you, uh, as I said, for having us. Uh, I want to discuss, it was really interesting that Mr. Baljit Singh uh, discussed the BTEC and, and talked about uh, progression and experiential learning. And I feel that the, the top up degree that I'm going to be uh, discussing today is a really, a really nice bridge because you, you know, students who join us uh, not only um, you know, enjoy an academic uh, education, but also uh, acquire many um, lifelong uh, experiential skills. Uh, I myself, I'm an alumni from uh, Manchester Metropolitan, where I studied uh, buying and merchandising, and, and I, I then went on to work in industry for over 10 years. And the university served me incredibly well um, and is very recognized for the fact that we are very um, uh, practical. So many of our students um, you know, enjoy uh, fantastically um, rich careers in buying, in fashion design, in merchandising, in product development uh, throughout the world. So we are a big university, there's about 34,000 students at uh, Manchester Met. Uh, the city is very vibrant because uh, the Manchester has three universities, we, we are one of them, so you can imagine that uh, 34,000 students multiplied by, you know, potentially three universities. It's, it's, uh, it's very rich, it's very lively, um, and it's a really happy place to be. Uh, we've got over 3,000 international students from 130 countries. Um, in my programme alone, the BA International um, Fashion Top Up, uh, we've got students from China, from India, from Canada, uh, from um, Korea. Um, so it's a really rich uh, community of international learners. Uh, we've got uh, 300,000 uh, alumni from 170 countries, so we really are keen to keep the, uh, the alumni connections going. We facilitate that by giving students access to a fantastic library resources um, through the career services uh, and so some great networking opportunities. We're constantly uh, investing um, large amounts of resources into planning and developing our facilities. We've got the, the SODA school that will be launched uh, shortly uh, and we constantly uh, upgrading our facilities, purchasing new machineries. We have 14 research centers, so the uh, university is very uh, research active and uh, Last but not least, over 150 um, sports club and societies. So we've got a very vibrant student union where students can do anything ranging from hockey to, um, I don't know, rock climbing to singing to theater. So students have got many opportunities to make new friends throughout these societies. We are rate, rated top 15 um, cities in the world. Um, as you might have gathered from my accent, I'm French uh, and I came to Manchester um, having um, never been before and studied here. And I have to say that the Mancunians were really, really welcoming and warm. And uh, 34 years on, I'm still here. So I absolutely love Manchester uh, because I think culturally it's very vibrant and varied. So you will find any food that you may 
enjoy, whether that be we've got a massive uh, Chinatown, we've got a huge Indian and uh, Bangladeshi area with all the shops and the fabrics and the spices and the restaurants. Um, in terms of uh, worshipping, again, we have many mosques, temples, churches. So I think it's, it feels very encompassing as a place to be. Um, the Mancunians are very warm and welcoming. So it's just some pictures here of, of the city itself. Uh, you can see uh, we've got Salford Key. Those of you who like uh, football, we've got obviously Manchester City and Manchester United. Fantastic stadiums. You can see the archway here to, um, to our Chinatown. Uh, it's a city, I wouldn't say it never sleeps, but it's, you know, there's always something going on. Um, and I'm also now that we're coming out of uh, well, it looks like or it feels like we're coming out of the pandemic a little bit in the UK. So things are really starting to heat up and, and, and becoming very lively everywhere. So that's an aerial view of, of, the, of the city. It was known as Cottonopolis. So in Victorian times, we had a lot of cotton mills. So th scattered throughout Manchester and the surrounding areas, we have a lot of old mills that have been refurbished into apartments and that heritage, that Victorian heritage, uh, combined with, uh, you know, um, state of the art, world leading architecture is makes it quite a, a sort of an interesting combination when you're walking around. You can see the library here, Manchester uh, Library and the town hall. Um, I'm not going to dwell on every photo because I know that um, the presentation is time critical. So. Um, I also wanted to highlight the fact that very near our doorsteps, um, you can hop on a train and within 20 minutes, you can be in the countryside. We've got the Yorkshire Dale, the Lake District, um, some very beautiful nature around us for you to enjoy in your uh, free time, if you enjoy walking and, and sightseeing. So as I've said before, we are a very vibrant, multicultural uh, community in Manchester. A lot of the, the heritage artistically in terms of fashion, music. I'm sure you will have heard of, you know, the music scene in Manchester with Oasis and the Hacienda and, you know, lots of really amazing gallery, a, a brilliant nightlife. And of course, a very student centered focus because there's so many of them around, which is what I love. So you can see some uh, a few images here. I mean, in fact, the one behind me, that's uh, where you would be studying. Uh, it's uh, the Wrighton building, which used to be a, um, a, a store in, uh, the, in the Victorian time. So it was, um, it's a really lovely um, old Victorian building. Uh, you can see pictures of the School of Art um, and some of the studio spaces um, that uh, we have. Um, so I'm going to play a little video now for you. Um, it contains some testimonials of students, not just on the top of degree, they're just students from the Manchester Fashion Institute at undergrad levels. What I love about studying fashion here is that it has prepared me to enter the industry. FDT is an exciting and challenging course, which I learned lots of industry relevant skills from design to garment making and business operation knowledge. What I really love about this course is that it saves me so much time because I only need one year to get my degree. What I love about studying fashion at Manchester Metropolitan University is the endless facilities provided by our fashion department. Studying here really opened a lot of doors for me. I was able to participate and win um, external competitions. And speaking from my experience, what they're teaching here is really what the industry is looking for in a graduate. They're pushing you to think more so you would have an ad advantage when you're competing with other graduates. I was also able to take a placement year where I had the opportunity to gain industry experience in San Francisco and London. Some of the advanced skills that I learned is like Gerber software and clear 3D design, which made me so much more competitive. I have learned so much in the last four years that it has prepared me to be really proficient in not only fashion design, but also that technological side of the industry. 
so you get to meet people all around the world, know about their fashion market, know about their style. So it's really exciting. I don't view MMU as just a university, but it's almost like a community. I feel very prepared for the industry because of the environment I study in, thanks to MMU. So lo lovely testimonials from our students. I've taught all these students at some point uh, because I, my, my specialism is fashion business. Um, so I teach enterprise, business startup, etc. But I'm here as the uh, program leader for the, uh, the top up. Um, we talked about pro progression route and we talked about experiential learning and vocational learning. And I think the course prepares students for all these things. So you have a choice uh, when you join us to either uh, do the business practice pathway or the design practice pathway. So the program is aimed at applicants from both business and design background. Um, of, obviously, when we recruiting students, we're looking at your personal um, sort of a letter or statement um, to see your motivations, uh, you know, your ambitions, um, and we, you know, we make decisions based if you want to go on the design practice pathway based on your portfolio and if you want to do, go on to the dis, uh, business practice pathway we have an interview with you um, just to sort of gain uh, where you at, what you want to do uh, it's, it's an informal discussion really so that you have the opportunity to ask some questions as well so you'll gain experience of both strategic and te uh, technical and creative aspects of fashion um, because it's, it's very unique, the course, in the sense that you are um, studying these two pathways. Obviously, ethics, sustainability underpinned everything that we, we teach on the course, because I mean, Patsy would uh, know a lot more than I do about this, because that's uh, also one of your specialism, isn't it, Patsy? Uh, sustainability. So, um, you know, we embed this in all the programs, pretty much, because none of us can ignore uh, you know, sustainability issues in the fashion uh, supply chain. So on the design practice pathway, we provide worldwide fashion industry with skilled design professionals. Students go into, uh, as well as design role, into product development roles. Um, they can be quality control roles. They can be pattern cutters, garment technologists, um, and you know, we want to make sure that when students leave us, they have an understanding of contemporary and emerging manufacturing um, and uh, fabric um, technology uh, enhancement, because obviously things are constantly moving. So we, as you will see when I talk about um, our resources, we're constantly invent, investing in new machinery in order to keep up with the latest development in the, in the supply chain. In terms of um, our design practice pathway, you explore what we do. We tend to work on a lot of uh, sort of live project or current issue project so that you explore real market insights um, and you are aware of all future global trends so that you can develop you know strategic man management and leadership skills and financial skills because there is a, of course a strong business element uh, on both pathways um, the, the the even design students uh, will be learning you know about costing uh, product costing fabric costing and how to cost a garment, uh, they will understand the retail um, margins, um, etc. So the way the course is designed, you have, um, it's broken down into four blocks of six weeks. Um, and you have some blocks that are shared between the design and the business practice pathways and then some blocks that are specific to your pathway. So for instance, if we look at the fashion enterprise or fashion culture, that's an optional unit. So students on the design or business pathway can choose to do fashion enterprise, which is a collaborative project working with students from other courses where you're developing a business proposition, creating a business plan and a lookbook, and you work as a group 
and as I say, it's collaborative. Or if you're more singular, you might choose to do uh, our fashion culture unit, which is a written piece of, um, of research of you choosing, but that focuses on sustainable practices, with it, whether that be you know, sustainable business models or the future and sustainability in the luxury fashion industry, et cetera. In block two, you have a, a unit called the business of global fashion. And again, that's a collaborative unit taken by both pathways and you working on a country of your choice. You're looking at, you're doing an analysis of a personal analysis of the country. You're looking at the consumers, you're looking at the competitors and you're developing a brand to uh, suit a, a specific target market. In block three, the business practice students have a, a unit called global strategy and design practice of industry project. The global strategy unique unit is a kind of um, a follow on from the business of global fashion, but it has a more in depth, a more analytical um, approach uh, to uh, different business models. So you may select a specific country and look at you know, key performance um, indicators and um, you know, come up with a rationale for the development of a specific brand in your chosen country. And then you've got the industry project and that in that you will do um, um, a video, you will develop your portfolio, you will be doing twirls, pattern cutting, Gerber, and all the CAD um, uh, skills um, that you require. And then in block four, you have the negotiated project. So what we do here, uh, we work with the career services. We look at what your aspirations are in your career and we tailor the, uh, the teaching and the project to your needs. So you're negotiating with your tutor and you know, using, so for instance, I have a student this year that was really interested in Clo 3 d so he kind of, his whole pro portfolio and project centered around developing that technology and producing a collection. And the outcome of that being for the design student that you will have um, garments uh, manufactured. So this, there are some of the outputs. In fact, there's a, uh, an image here of uh, the, the close 3D work that the final year student did. Um, you know, we have students um, sort of working on, um, you know, the, the solar system, developing the collections around that, or, you know, so students are analyzing markets and countries or developing the collections based on their future aspirations. I think I'll, I'll let Patsy tell you a little more about the, uh, the suite of uh, masters. Thank you, Patsy. Thank you. So this September, we will be launching our new suite of um, master's programmes. So we've developed these over the past year to provide a comprehensive offer of master's programmes in fashion across fashion design and fashion business. So we have the MA Fashion Design Technology, which is a one year fashion design programme based on our hugely successful and very well respected undergraduate programme of the same name. And then we also have four um, fashion business master's programmes in international fashion business management, international fashion marketing, luxury fashion management, and fashion buying and merchandising management. And these really reflect the different industry routes that a graduate might consider to give them that springboard into the um, industry area, whether they want to start their own brand or whether they want to work for a global business and give them the, the knowledge and, and the skills that they need to, to, to get into that industry route. And we have a fantastic cohort. I've been teaching the master's students this year. We have a really diverse um, cohort of students from around the world of different experiences. Some of our master's students have come straight from undergraduate study. Others have been in industry for five years, 10 years. We even have one student who's come back to do her master's after 20 years in industry. So it is a great um, opportunity for networking and also building friendships um, for the future. On the fashion business programmes, we have a mix of core options where you will be in the class with other students from the other master's programme. So again, great opportunity for networking and making friendships outside of your own programme of study. And there's also optional units um, and also ways that you can personalise your learning depending on you know, what your interests and your aspirations are. Uh, happy to take any questions um, at the end, but I'll let Natalie move on with the rest of the presentation now.
Thank you. Uh, so we've got staff expertise, like I was explaining. Um, I kind of, I'm a, an alumni from Manchester Met, went out in industry. Many of the staff uh, that teach on the program have had that industry um, experience, um, and which then facilitates networks. And, um, you know, we, as I said, we work closely with our alumni. Our, our students go on to, to doing wonderful things, um, sometimes come back and teach as well. So it's a, a very rich um, environment um, that where, where staff have got a true understanding of what goes on in, in the sector. So in terms of your teaching, we normally we have lectures, seminars, tutorials, and each student is allocated a personal tutor. So you're guaranteed, um, you know, re regular sort of encounters with your personal tutor on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, you have, you know, we support you independent studies. We have fantastic library facilities. Uh, the studios are amazing. Um, and we have industry visit. We have guest speakers from industry who come to speak to our students on a regular basis. They talk about their job roles. They talk about uh, what they look for in a graduate. And we, of course, when we develop any course, we work very closely with industry industry to ensure that we, um, uh, you know, we, we meet the requirements of industry because it's, you know, it's, it's changing so fast. And we've seen during the, the pandemic, you know, the, the, the job roles changing a lot with online taking, you know, a greater um, portion of the market share. So, you know, we, we're working very closely with, uh, with our networks. We collected with over 400 industry partners, Chanel, Hugo Boss, Alexander McQueen. We work very closely with the British Fashion Council. Um, in fact, at the moment, we're involved with the, um, the oh gosh, the British Fashion Council um, show. Um, I'm forgetting the name, Patsy, can you rescue me? It's the... We're also um, a, a signatory member of Textiles 2030, which is a groundbreaking initiative between industry and other stakeholders to push for a more sustainable fashion industry in the UK. So we, we are really very well connected with industry and we make sure that all of that feeds through into the programmes and, and offers opportunities for students, perhaps from internships, um, guest lectures and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Patsy. It's Graduate Fashion Week I was looking for. <laughs> I just had a, a, um, a brain freeze. So we, we kind of really busy with that at the moment. Um, and then we have uh, we offer students whenever possible external visits. So that may be, you know, a comp shop in London. Um, we may uh, visit some factories. We still have some local production taking place. Um, we have networking opportunities, careers, fairs. So about two or three times a year, we have key players from industry joining us in the business school and students have got the opportunity to go on the stands to swap business cards and, and do lots of um, networking. So in terms of career support, we have, I've worked for instance with the top up this year, we had uh, career services coming in every single week to help students set up their LinkedIn profile. Um, to uh, prepare for interviews. We had uh, online video interviews. We've helped students prepare their CVs, their cover letters, how to tailor your CV or cover letter to a specific job, etc. So we, you know, we constantly, we, we are aware that, uh, you know, education needs to be um, you know, um, vocational and to ensure that our students get good positions once they leave us. And of course, we put every um, resources uh, into ensuring that our uh, students are very well prepared uh, to seek employment or go on to uh, a master's. So it's interesting this year with the with my top up cohort It's about half and half, you know, about half the class wants to do masters and the other half has already, um, you know, gained employment. So, you know, and some of them are still looking. So we're doing quite well. So we work with a lot of global companies like Nike, Burberry, Louis Vuitton, etc. And uh, we have an employability hub in the business school. Uh, that was um, developed 
about a couple of years ago. So you have a lot of staff on hand. Again, if you have any careers concerned or you want to some help to help you tailor your CV or you want to do a practice interview, um, the career services can, can assist you with that. We've got state-of-the-art facilities, as I was mentioning, with a uh, you know, uh, workshop, uh, we've got uh, photography resources, we have technical support, a technical team is second to none, uh, and we have multi-million pound investment in our technologies. What's really good for students, our library is typically open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we have late opening in, uh, and weekend opening in the studio so students can carry on working. We've got access to fantastic databases, so a business student will be interested in, you know, edited and WGSN and Drapers uh, and, and the likes. Um, we, you know, WGSN obviously uh, more for design students. Uh, we have um, LinkedIn Learning, we do enterprise boot camps about three times a year. Um, and uh, as I said, we have the career services. This is a list of all the, um, all this, the, well, some of the resources that we have on site. I'm not going to read through all of them, but needless to say, you can see that we incredibly well equipped. You can see a photo, a photo here of one of our uh, sewing rooms. We've got about six or seven of those on, um, on in the right and building. We've got um, a textile lab, which is fantastic as well, um, with um, our technicians on site, 3D body scanner. We work a lot with the fashion retailers to, to scan um, some of the population so that we help, we do project on sizing and size and fit, etc. So students can either use the, the technology for specific projects under the supervision of technicians, I used to add, or, or we, we, you know, as researcher, we do a lot of work with, uh, with industry on sizing, etc. So this year, we're going to have our class of 21, 22, um, celebrations i will be sending archana and benoit uh, the link so you can uh, you can have a look at that uh, we've got the manchester international festival uh, graduate fashion week which i've just mentioned and numerous international competitions so in entry requirements so because we are progression routes up that means you guys will be doing your hnd and then at the end of the hnd your second year you then join the, 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 the top up um, for your final year. So it's a one in one year, you can get a degree. Um, and then if you so wish, like many students do, you can do another year and then you have a degree and a master's. So it's a fantastic opportunity to uh, fast track your, uh, your qualifications. Um, in terms, so I can tell you a little bit about the entry requirement. I'm not really au fait with all the visa requirement, but we have uh, a um, Man Manchester Met office in Delhi uh, and we have members of staff dedicated to specifically to answering any question in regards to that. Um, as you can see, you need an IELTS score of six with a minimum of 5.5 in each element. And as I mentioned before, uh, if you were to apply on the top up, you would have to submit a portfolio or uh, we'd have to have an interview if you want to go on the business uh, practice pathway. And then the scholarships as well. Uh, this year was on the 18th of May. The Vice Chancellor offers a scholarship, a scholarship for undergrad and postgrad student worth uh, £5,000. Um, and Every year, I don't have the exact date for next academic year, but normally it takes place around mid-May. We offer scholarships of up to £3,000 for international students studying a postgraduate taught program, a scholarship of £2,000 per year for international students uh, studying undergraduate programs, and various sports scholarship packages as well. Um, I've put a link here um, 
for if you want to find out a little bit more about our undergrad or postgrad um, courses at the Manchester Fashion Institute, you can visit the link. If you're a bit concerned about a portfolio, how to do a portfolio, again, you can check uh, our web page and um, there are some videos specifically for the Manchester Institute about the sort of things we will be looking for in, in a portfolio. So I'm sorry if I've taken too much time, but I hope it was helpful. Thank you.